First of all, yes, I was on this committee, and uh, I did get off, and I, I did not have the opportunity because we didn't have a meeting uh, to uh, properly get off. So if I could take a moment. Um, it has been a pleasure to serve on this committee. Uh, I was placed on this committee when it first was formed, and you guys do great, great work. Um, I know where all your hearts are, and I know what we have accomplished as, as a committee, as a select committee, and hopefully will be a standing committee. And I want to, it's been a pleasure to work with, with all of you. And LCO and LOR, I got to tell you, you guys are great to work with. And we have probably one of the best clerks in the building with Paul Tarbox, who is, just does a terrific job in making sure that the veterans and their concerns are heard. And his input uh, is very valuable, but he never tries to persuade what, what he believes in. He just lets us know the tools that we need to think about when we make our decision. And this has been an excellent committee. I think it's been said that you judge a society based upon the way you treat the veterans. And if that's true, then this committee is bestowed with the greatest obligation the state could ever bestow a committee. With that, may I say, the reason why I left was at opening day, Senator Welch, when he was uh, talking on opening day and greeting his family, said um, that he's with the Army, you know, the uh, National Guard and uh, talked about his service National Guard, and I started to think, as much as I love this committee, I think it's more important to have somebody who could probably add the concerns of the National Guard and our veterans on sort of, no pun intended, boots on the ground. And as much as I love this committee, as much as I don't want to be off this committee because we do great work and it's, it's, a, it's a fun committee, I felt it was more important to have the benefit of his experience in the National Guard at this committee. And it was right after that that I talked to Senator McKinney and said, as much as I don't want to leave, I think it's in the best interest of the state, and I left. So with that, I just want to thank you all uh, for uh, uh, the work that you do and working with you. And I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on you, uh, but you definitely uh, have a friend uh, up in the Senate. Senator Fazano, I just want to say uh, it, what a pleasure it was to serve alongside of you uh, as uh, chair of the committee. You brought a wonderful perspective, always uh, impartial and bipartisan attitude to the work of this. Of course, we all strive for that, and it's been a wonderful experience. So I look forward to continuing serving you in the Senate, but we'll miss you here. Thank you, Thank you. Senator. I just, I'd just like to comment that um, we worked together um, for many years on planning and development, and I'm no longer on that committee, but I was looking forward to continuing to have the relationship with you because... Um, like uh, Senator Maynard has said, uh, you're, you're very uh, professional and uh, for the most part, at least in P&D and here, uh, I, I, you know, pretty much uh, bipartisan. Uh, we're looking for the, the best for the state of Connecticut. And uh, so I was disappointed to see that you were leaving. Thank you for your service. I appreciate that. And uh, best of luck in your chairman position. I know you'll do well. So an act concerning identification cards for veterans. Um, uh, there was a constituent, there is a constituent, in fact he's here today, Mr. Anzetti, who brought this to my attention. And what this serves to do, and the commissioner spoke about it, so I won't go into too much of the detail, but basically trying to take a driver's license and on the driver's license have an indication of a veteran. That, it, that icon could be a V, it could be the Bullet Eagle, it could be our our service medal, our Connecticut service medal placed on there, but something like that to indicate the, that the person is a veteran. And we would use that same definition that we have consistently said we're going to hold in, uh, in the state, which is the mirror image of the federal definition, so there's no question that we're dealing with the same benefits. The purpose of this is that many of the benefits are, that are there, veterans go and say, I'm a veteran, and then they have to go through the pro proof. Having this on the license deals with that. Now, Georgia is a good law to look at. I, I've given uh, the clerk uh, copies of the Georgia law, which does it through Motor Vehicle Department, which talks about the criteria. I think that's a good thing to look at. In particular, um, as uh, probably Representative Guerra knows and, and others, uh, Connecticut's going to be going through the real ID uh, legislation, which is a mandate federal legislation on all states that for now on when you renew your license you're going to have to show certain evidence of proof. You're going to have to show, it's not a state law, this is federal, you're going to have to show 
and I, I'm talking a little bit off the cuff here, but as I understand it, a birth certificate, a uh, certified birth certificate, and a social security number where the two names match, and if you get married, you get to show a marriage certificate, so forth and so on. So there's going to be a little extra step process on your renewal starting in May of 2011, and maybe when we get going, maybe later than that. But at any point, tying this in with that type of process seems to me a small step because you're going to be going through a little bit more of a, of a lengthier process, and people are not going to be doing it online. They're going to be doing it uh, with exchange of documents. So this probably is the opportune time to do it. It gets phased in as renewals happen. But I think it's important to do. I think if we're doing all these benefits at the federal level and the state level for veterans, then we should have a mechanism to make it easier for them. And this is the porthole mechanism to make it easier for them. Um, I think it's worthwhile legislation. Uh, I know Mr. Anzetti is going to talk about it a little bit in, in detail than, than I will, and I'll leave that to him. Um, and I hope you will support this measure out of this committee. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Senator. Any questions? Um, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, this happened across my mind, and, and I was thinking about it. You know, we talk about uh, different unfunded mandates and things like that, and what you know? If I remember correctly, and please correct me, somebody correct. Aren't all our DD two fourteens in every city hall in the state of Connecticut? When you because you get tax deductions as a veteran, I, I think there's a copy of everybody's DD two fourteen. What if we had something where we could work it out? This is just an idea, just popped in my head just now. I'm not even saying it's possible, but what if what if the city clerk at a small a small nominal fee just to cover you know, the printing of it, could issue a card. So, because they have the DD-214s on file, they could say, yes, this this office, this gentleman served from 1960 <laughs> to 1964, honorably discharged, boom, they print the card out, the, guy, the person pays a small fee for that, because otherwise it would become an unfunded mandate. Then they have that card, and it's issued right by the city that they live in. Couldn't we consider something like that? You, you, you definitely could consider something like that, assuming that you know, with all the uh, funded, non-funded mandate things we talk about in this building, we get over that hurdle. I think you could do. The point of it is to try to have one card yeah. that satisfies. So people don't. I mean, I have like you know a BJ's card and a Best Buy card, and whenever I go, I never have them. I don't know what happens to them. They disappear, and then I get there, and I don't have it. And but so the idea is to have one card that that has this information that people always. Uh, have with them, no matter where they go, no matter what state they're in, no matter what uh, town they're in, they have this. Uh, they have their driver's license generally with them, and that's where I think the indication should be. I think there's going to be pushback on that other issue from a variety of of reasons and a variety of sources. Um, so uh, I I agree with you. It's a possibility, uh, but I'm looking for it to be more on the uh, license. But I don't disagree with that thought. Right, I understand that, and I can appreciate that, and. That's probably where it should happen. It just it, that just hit my mind just now as you were talking as well, because those are on file. You know, right. but it would have to there'd have to be some cost involved, which is, you know, it has to be done. Uh, but no, thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you very you. much. I appreciate and I enjoyed working with you for the last four years. Same here. Thank you. Thank you, Representative De Castro. Representative.